Dr. Bruno Wu joins me now. He's the chairman of Ideanomics Inc., trading on NASDAQ under the symbol IDEX. Dr. Wu, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Good to be with you. Excellent. Uh, could we please start with an overview of the business of Ideanomics, please? Well, Ideanomics is a uh, company that we took over about less than two years ago, and we've been working very hard on the conversion of it uh, into a well, two parts of the business. Number one is a, a commercial EV, commercial electronic vehicle ecosystem builder. And second is we have innovation technology investment. Uh, innovation including FinTech, AI, blockchain, uh, new, new medical uh, devices, uh, a bunch of things. So uh, there are two parts of the company. Aha, uh -huh. okay. and. Uh your focus on the electric car infrastructure and economy is of, of, of tantamount interest to me. I uh, recently ordered a Tesla truck, so I'm going to be very interested in what you're doing. Um, tell me, what is, the, uh, what is the driver of revenue? Well, the driver of the revenue, uh, we always will have the vehicle sales revenue, uh, the financing revenue that goes along with the sales uh, you know, the financing advisory revenue. Uh, on, on top of that, the, uh, we're really looking at uh, the uh, continuing recurring energy sales revenue on the secure clients. So in other words, we are GM, if you want, in the short term. Uh, but in the long term wise, we like to be uh, ExxonMobil. Hmm. So the and whole concept. I see. Uh, and so you're... Uh recently opened a 10,000 square foot facility in Qingdao. Um, what kind of penetration do electric vehicles have in the Chinese market at this point? Well, we, we're actually opening up uh, a 100,000, uh, uh, sorry, a, a million square feet, a million square feet, 100,000 square meters. So it's a, it's a million square feet. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, sorry, so, I misread so, that. Much, much bigger right. than what you just uh, uh, said. Uh, the the Chinese EV uh, overall the uh, the market occupation rate the market rate uh, is 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 going up, it's going up more and more rapidly. But we focus in the commercial EV area uh, because we believe that for all the passengers to switch to EV, it's a still we're still looking at uh, us up to seven to years apart for the uh, for the majority of the vehicles passenger vehicles to the EV because there's a lot of stuff uh, in supporting infrastructure will have to come with it uh, and a, a lot of the uh, the uh, functionalities will have to improve uh, the battery duration and all that stuff. But with commercial EV, uh, particularly with heavy duty truck and buses and logistic vehicles and even taxis, there is a economic incentive for the driver to uh, uh, change to EV because they cut their uh, energy cost by uh, uh, a overwhelming majority. In the in the case of uh, a commercial truck, a heavy duty truck, for example, so we focus on commercial vehicles uh, into four different kinds of uh, vehicles, which is again heavy duty truck, um, uh, logistic vehicles, buses, and taxis. We see the percentage of that. Uh, going out very, very quickly. Taking China, for example, if you take mining as a, as a case, a use case scenario, uh, you know, what we're doing in the Mongolia, in the Mongolia has 125,000 uh, mining related heavy duty trucks. 84, 85,000 of them are actually short distance uh, uh, trucks, and a lot of them are off the road vehicles that uh, they just work on a mining field. No license plates required. Hmm. If you cut it down, if you convert just the 84,000, 85,000 into EV, five years, 15, uh, uh, sorry, 150 billion RMB saving in fuel cost. 150 billion in five years. So wow. it's, it's, uh, 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 it's, you know, it's quite astonishing. So that's why we're working with the government there uh, to completely. Uh, uh, execute that transformation, not only this will uh, save fuel costs, save operating costs, it will also uh, cut down pollution. 
So in, in China and in most of the uh, Southeast Asian countries as well, because their uh, uh, resource, uh, you know, their energy uh, 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 poor, mm -hmm. uh, you know, big producers of energy and energy costs are going up. So they're spending, in China in particular, uh, the, the government puts a mandate to convert, like in the, in the Mongolia, heavy-duty trucks. Uh, and in most of the Chinese cities, the buses are being converted very rapidly uh, in, into EV buses. And it's mandatory. Mm -hmm. So are the economic incentives, uh, besides the economic incentives associated for the owners of these vehicles, is, it, is the government subsidizing the adoption of the electric heavy-duty trucks in an effort to combat the uh, quality, air quality issues in China? Uh, yes. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yes, the uh, government has been subsidizing uh, uh, for the past few years. But the biggest hurdle is not a government subsidizing. The biggest hurdle is when you're talking about large fleet replacement, okay, in, in the Mongolia, for example, you're talking about 84, 85,000 vehicles to be replaced within two to three years window. You need a huge fleet financing being arranged. That's priority number one, because before the fleet financing is put in place, you will not be able to replace 85,000 trucks and not, you will not even be able to uh, replace 10,000 trucks. And that's, uh, uh, you know, uh, because the mostly the banks provide financing uh, because uh, and, the, and the leasing financing company provide financing, but there's a limit to it. There's no blue book value, no residual value, historical value on EV. So they don't know how to manage risk. So every time it's, it's uh, uh, you know, one financing at a time. So mm -hmm. now we need the umbrella financing for the fleet purchase. So that's what we're working on. Province by province, uh, electrification fund that we're working with the government of putting together. I see. Um, as a NASDAQ traded company, are you uh, trying to access North American capital to participate in this financing? Uh, no. We have our financing pretty much sorted out uh, in, in China with the insurance companies. So the way we do it is, you know, we designed a very nice architecture that creates a win-win-win for everybody. So basically we go to a, a local government uh, with triple A or more in, uh, in the credit rating, a very sound, financially sound government. Uh, and, and we'll, we'll say to them, uh, we'll say to the government investment corporation, uh, which has the triple A rating or more, we say, how about we raise funds for you from the insurance companies, uh, uh to do this, but we use your, uh, uh, you know, credit rating, we use your government credit. To, uh, to guarantee the repayment of principal. Because of the fact that insurance companies can offer uh, uh, loans at much cheaper price than the normal banks and other uh, financial institutions, uh, it becomes very attractive uh, to the local government. So that's how we're putting the big, you know, ex-bank, not non-bank, uh, 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 non other regular uh, lending institution that we're, we're, we're putting together electrification funds, uh, so sort of us, government and insurance company, tri-party uh, uh, partnership. And we're mm -hmm. doing very, we're, we're making very good progress on that. So That's once nice. you have funding in place, uh, then, uh, you know, because we don't lack big ticket of all this. The issue is how do you put financing in place? Uh, once that's done, the, uh, the uh, uh, sales number will absolutely skyrocket. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so specifically, how does Ideanomics capture revenue from that whole process? Well, uh, first of all, first of all, uh, Ideanomics is very much focused on signing umbrella uh, agreements to uh, lock up uh, uh, to to uh, dominate certain market sectors. For example, heavy duty truck. So not only we're signing with in the Mongolia, we're actually signing with uh, all China's top six mining provinces. So heavy duty truck uh, works very well for mining, for port, for steel mills, uh, and uh, uh, in you know the, these are the in, these are the perfect 
scenario. So we're we're signing mines, we're signing ports, uh, so and and we're signing province by province. So so in that case, we also uh, formed a partnership uh, with. Uh, CATL, which is the world's largest uh, battery company. So we be- sort of become CATL's marketing and sales company. Hmm. So CATL uh, then, uh, and then we, uh, you know, we sign with uh, 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 four or five uh, leading manufacturers ourselves on volume discount. But now we're, with CATL, we're, we're reaching to uh, uh, over 20 uh, major manufacturers. Uh, on top of the uh, four or five we signed ourselves. So now we have volume discount. Now we have uh, also uh, uh, the leasing, financing, and operation company uh, forming alliance with us. So we our revenue coming from, number one, very large number of sales, and, and there's a very nice spread because we, uh, uh, we, we, we take out all the middlemen. Mm-hmm. Number two is we arrange the financing. Uh, so on the... F- Managing the fund, we have a management fee, and the financing, we we take, you know, approximately one percent to two percent uh, from from the uh, from the recurring financing, and uh, we further have ABS asset backed securitization type of uh, uh, opportunities with the leasing financing companies, but most importantly, is now we have secured very large clientele. For example, if we dominate. Uh, in the Mongolia, in the trucking space, then these trucks need to be charged. So we make a deal with the energy company, uh, a, a, a power company, to take a cut in the power sales, hmm. offer a discount. So it, it is, we, uh, uh, once the sale starts, we, we get revenue left and right. Mm-hmm. A same situation holds true with the umbrella agreement uh, with the Chinese uh, uh, tourism Automobile and uh, vessel uh, association, which regulates all the tour buses. You know that China has about 800 intercity uh, and the two uh, and, and tour buses, 800,000. Sorry, and we, which is uh, if you look at the whole size of the Chinese market per se, uh, we're we're looking at a 4.7 to 4.8 trillion heavy duty truck market, which is the biggest. We're looking at a 3.6 to 3.7 trillion uh, logistic vehicle in in the city logistic vehicle market. We're looking at a uh, uh, 1.8 trillion um, uh, a bus market, and we're looking at a 1.1 trillion uh, a taxi and rideshare uh, market. We, we're certainly attacking all four of them, but with a very strong focus with bus. And uh, uh, a truck to to begin with. Okay, Dr. Wu, we're going to have to leave it there for now. It sounds like a fascinating business. We look forward to following you with interest, and we'll have you back soon. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you so much. Good to be with you. You bet.